would do that. I would do that. Because it's breakfast with Bob. Thank you, Pacho Man. Welcome to Day 5, Breakfast with Bob from Conan Huggles on the Rocks. My name is Bob Babb, brought to you by Master Spas, as fuels go longer, Hoka Let's Fly, Deborah Wetsuits, Form Smart Swim Goggles, Zoot Sports, original triathlon brand, Quintana Roo, Premium Plus Sports, and of course, our Challenged Athletes Foundation, our next guest, age grouper, Mr. Steve Sutherland, who is over here having a well-deserved vacation. Yes, sir. It's, uh, yeah, how can you not have fun over here and enjoy how beautiful it is? how chill it is, and not racing. It's the best, I, I, right? You know, when I drove in this morning, I saw some people out on uh, the Queen K Highway biking, and I thought, oh, my gosh, I hope they're not trying to do 50, 75 miles today right before the race starts. Yes, right? which we know all the time. We yeah. all know that little voice in the back of our head, right? The hardest word <laughs> is taper, Yeah. right? Yeah. You're, you're, every week, you're yeah. doing the same amount of volume, and then those last two weeks, you have to taper, and, of course, you don't feel good, yep. you, you, you get edgy, all that type of stuff. So, you're like, well, I know it'll make me feel better. I'll go for a 10-mile run. Yeah. And yeah. then you leave it out on the race course. It's yeah, gone. and it's probably the worst thing you could do. How'd you get into the sport? Uh, I had friends who kept talking me into it. Um, I used to bike everywhere. Yeah. I used to swim a lot. I'd bike from uh, my house over to the Plunge, yes. Mission Beach. I'd go swimming, and I'd, people would go, oh, my God, you've got to try this thing called triathlon, right? And then I, uh, I ended up moving um, overseas for a couple of years. Uh, I got married. I had kids. You know, life happens and all yes. that. And then I came back around to it. And I was reading the San Diego Union Tribune one morning, and there was an article in there, and it was uh, Rock Fry had put something in there about training for a triathlon, and he had given a, a sample of what you might do for your first month. Oh, for I a training program. Oh, yeah. yeah, I could do that, you know. And my wife, who's here with me, Heather, she, she has a brother who had done uh, a couple Ironmans and had trained with, um, with uh, Scott Tinley and, and yep. all those folks. So I said, well, heck, I'll just sign up for the Mission Bay Triathlon. Why not? Give it a try, you know. And I didn't know what I was doing. And I, when I look at the video of that first race, oh, my God, I was putting on basketball tube socks before I put on my shoes. Of you know? course. And, and, you know, when I got out of the water and stood up, I didn't know what to expect. And I, I got dizzy. I almost fell over. You know, so I, I really had the the um, I guess the, the true age grouper experience of your first time race where, I, you know, I'm out there on the bike and, and in the back of my head, I'm going, oh, my God, I'm doing this. I'm actually doing this. And there's something you know? special about that. There is. And that, that joy is something that we can't let go of, that we can't forget. And as we continue, you're part of USA Triathlon, as we continue to yes. try to grow our sport. And we have, you know, we have challenges. We, it's, we're, there's an endurance entertainment marketplace with obstacle course racing and all marathons, half marathons, gravel. Yeah. There's so many other things for people to do in the endurance sports marketplace. And when you say, okay, you need to be able to swim, you need to be able to ride a bike, you need to be able to run, it's hard to, for people to grasp what the feeling is going to be and that you can do this for the rest of your life until they do it. There, yeah, but there are significant barriers that we need to be aware of. Yes, swimming, um, number one. Swimming, you know, we take it, you and I, take it for granted that we have access to a swimming pool. And that our parents helped us get swim lessons or taught us how to swim when we grew up. But there are right. a lot of people who don't know how to swim or they're very fearful of swimming, especially in open water. And, and uh, there's an organization in San Diego, I, I think you probably know them, the Prevention of Drowning Organization, that's reaching out to underserved communities because they found that if your parents don't know how to swim, they're less likely to teach you how to swim or encourage you to learn how to swim. And so that's a barrier. Having a, access to a pool, we take that for granted. That's a barrier. Um, having a bicycle, you know, we might say, oh, gee, I need a used bicycle. Uh, it's a couple hundred bucks. That might mean a lot to somebody. Absolutely. That, that might be a step too far for people. So there are a lot yeah. of other things that we need to think about when we try to bring new people into the sport. And it's funny because when we come here and it's, it's Ironman and it's th a couple thousand participants and you yeah. go, okay, this is great. Our sport is booming. But we all know that yeah, when your race is over as a race director, tomorrow you have an empty corral for next year. Yes. We need new people all yes. the time. And yes. I've always been a, a big uh, proponent of the shorter the better. Pool triathlons, getting people in so they feel comfortable in the water. They're not worried about someone hitting them in the head. They're not worried about big fish or kelp or glare or any of that crap that you have to deal with. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I think it's really important to understand that a lot of people here or the pointy end of the spear, right? Right, yes. But when you look at a typical race, there are people there doing it 
because they want to try something new, because they want to get healthy, because they want to lose weight, because they're overcoming an injury or addiction or some other issue in their life, you know, because they're honoring a loved one. So we have to remember that that 99% of our age group athletes aren't here. They're out there and we can't forget about them while we um, praise and justifiably praise the women who qualified and are competing in this race. Now you went to Milwaukee to age group nationals this year. I did. And it was phenomenal. Yes, yes. You come home not feeling good. No, no, I came home and (laughs) the day after I came home I tested positive for COVID and I was sick for uh, seven, eight days, pretty sick. And I'm still dealing with some COVID fatigue. It's been two months. And if there's a, yeah, there's a hangover that comes with that, right? There's, yeah, yeah. It's just you go I, out for a ride or run or swim and you're just tired. Y- you are. Uh, I think I had brain fog for several weeks after. Uh, and now I find, as you say, when I go for a run or something, it's, I really have to push myself more, a lot more than I used to have to. It's getting better. Good. And, and it'll get there. But, I, I, you know, it makes me realize that... I think sometimes I've really taken my fitness and my health for granted. And you now something's been that. taken yeah. away. And now I have to work really hard to get it back. And so I have to be grateful for what I have and grateful that I have the ability to try to get it back. Exactly. When I look at, at San Diego specifically, we've lost a fair number of races, right? We lost mm-hmm. Super Frog, yep. Super Seal, Carlsbad, Chula yeah. Vista, yeah. Encinitas Imperial Beach, Port- Encinitas, yes. So we've lost a lot of races. I mean, the positive is with there's less races, those races should be healthy. More people should be doing them. But we still need to be out there beating the drums to get more people finding out about the, what I consider the best sport there is. We have a, a lot of challenges, uh, I think, in any big city these days. Uh, the cost of permitting has gone way up. Yep. Um, in San Diego, we have some challenges with our roads. The road maintenance has been deferred for a long time, and the road conditions aren't terribly good. Uh, and I think uh, a couple of the races that I did this year that I've done many, many times before, like San Diego International and Spring Sprint, it seemed like the, on a bike course we were getting squeezed down into smaller and smaller lanes. Yes. Smaller, you know, it's, it's, it used to be we'd have the whole road, then half it's the road, and now, now maybe we're getting a third of the road, you know? Yeah, it's way more expensive than it used to be. And I think from COVID, a lot of these cities were hurting. So they're trying yeah. to charge more. They're yeah. trying to make it up from events. And event directors squeeze as it is. Yeah. It's, I always look at our race directors as the endangered species of our sport, and we've got to make sure that we take care of those guys. Yeah. Well, and I know you had Vic on yesterday. Yes. Uh, Vic Broomfeld, who is the, uh, the, uh, the CEO. CEO of USAT. Uh, we look at multi-sports as possibly one of the best areas to grow our sport right now. And that means you don't have to do a, a, a full triathlon. You can do a swim run or a swim bike. Right you know, an aquathlon or an aqua bike. And I think that uh, that might open it up for a lot more people. I think, as you said, the shorter events, uh, the mini tries, the super sprint tries. By the way, we also have multi-sport nationals every year now. Now, what's that going to be? Is that? It's in Omaha okay. next year in June. Um, it's a whole week-long festival. It is. It is. You can sign up for, I think it's 12 races you could sign up for total if you include relays. I did five last year. I did five this year. <laughs> it's That's a lot crazy. of racing, over, but, it, but you sort of get into a rhythm, right? You, you do. Uh, you know, it takes a lot of endurance to do the longer course races. Right. But you go out and do a super sprint try and redline your heart for 20 minutes, 25 minutes, and tell me you didn't work hard. And it's crazy. It's a whole different type of racing. And it's a heck of a lot of fun. It's an interesting era when we talk about Super League and Clash and challenge and ironman and 70.3 and the pto, PTO with their dome. yeah there's there's so many as a pro right now there's so many great options and i think with pto they're going to be doing six or seven age group races as well more and more age group opportunities and do you see that as an age group athlete that's an interesting question i watched the pto races in milwaukee and they were a lot of fun to watch right and wow those folks are fast yes they are oh my gosh they're fast uh, uh watching uh, sebastian uh, come across the finish line was amazing um and oh, i think there Jan, are a lot of Jan who won? i mean I, yeah, for Dano, uh, for Dano, it might I'm be sorry, his last no, no, it might be his last ever win that was pretty yeah, cool yeah yeah uh i did hear some people say they would like to do that race but i haven't heard a big groundswell yet for that exactly well and the hard part is most of those are in europe and asia 
So, you know, yeah. there's really, yeah. it, it, there'll be a big in Europe. And we've seen in terms of in the U.S., I mean, Iron Man is, I think there's eight fulls now in the U.S. There's a lot less than there used to be. So we've seen uh, the sport go a little bit backwards, like I talked about the other events that went away. How do we grow it? Well, I think we get back to getting that youth pipeline going. I agree. You know, we've, we've done a, USAT has done a wonderful job of reaching out to colleges, to the NCAA. And they focused on women's mm. uh, college 40, sports. 40 schools, Over 40 yeah. now. 43, yeah. I think we're up to 43 now. Um, and uh, now there's a high school program that's being developed to reach out to yes. develop that. Um, if you know Judy uh, Carberry. She, yes. She's one of the people who's very active in Splash and Dash for the kids. Kids program. Yeah. So I think that's the key. Because if I look around a typical tri-club meeting, I see a lot of people who look like you and me. Exactly. You know? We need younger people. We need younger people in the sport. Yeah. I, what, what I love is when we go out to a race like Triton Man, a, a collegiate race. Yeah. Collegiate clubs, I think, is the future. You have 150 members of Cal Berkeley Tri Club. Right, those are people who are going to fill up our corrals for the next couple decades, and they love our sport. You got USC out there, and UCLA, and all these colleges were the club scene. To me, the NCAA thing is nice. To me, the club scene is is way more important in terms of our future. You know, uh, Triton Man is a great race, be in part because it's run by the students as yes. well. And you're right, the energy from all the uh, the the club members who are there from the different schools is fantastic. And if you went to a UC or you had a child who went to a UC, you got something to really cheer about also, right? Absolutely. And the, my favorite part is when, you know, you have your age on your calf and you get passed by like three kids and they don't even add up to your age. And yeah. you're like, okay, this is, and that race is the only race I've ever done where the, the average age was 27 or something like that, right? Where most of the age races we do, it's, it's 40 plus. Yeah. Uh, for you, what's, uh, what's up next? What racing are you going to be doing, uh, or are you just trying to get healthy? Uh, well, I'm trying to get healthy, but I am uh, signed up for uh, IM 70.3 Indian Wells. Okay. I'm doing that race again. Uh, you know, that, that is a, a challenging race. I, I haven't done a 70.3 that wasn't challenging. But uh, you, you look at the profile, and you say, well, it's a pretty flat course. Unless cold you've water, raced out there. Yeah. Cold water. Wind. Uh, you're... you're, you're downhill for the first half of the bike with a little bit of a tailwind and then you're uphill with a headwind the whole yes. way back on the bike and then the run course is mostly on a golf cart path and across some sand dunes no rhythm so there's no no you're constantly going up down up down up down it's a very challenging course so uh, i'm looking forward to it it'll be a lot of fun all-time favorite race lava man it's the best, right? Yeah, Lava Man right is here awesome. on this island yes in may yes may or june and yeah. and the best finish line party ever ever yeah love it yeah, it's a wonderful place to go. And Steve, when you go from being an age group athlete to be sort of getting behind the curtain look, being involved with USA Triathlon, what have you gained from that? You know, I get a lot of really personal satisfaction out of the positive things that I've been able to do for the sport, even though most people don't know about it. And that's good. That's, a, that's okay. That's why I'm doing it. I'm not doing it for me. I'm doing it for the sport. Um, you know, I was involved in creating the Hall of Fame for USAT, um, involved with the uh, Athlete of the Year Awards, the Multisport Awards, which were our lifestyle awards like, like Lifetime Achievement or Volunteer yep. of the Year, Comeback of the Year. Um, there, there are a lot of things that we're doing for Clydesdale Athena athletes, for Team USA. Um, we're t uh, doing what we can to help the national office in outreach for underserved uh, populations. Yes. Uh, so there's a, there's a lot that goes on on that committee. Um, I've been on that committee for 20 years. I've been a chair for about half that time. Um, I also chair the Hall of Fame committee. I know. Uh, I, I know. I know. I, I helped put this guy in. Um, <laughs> uh, and and we had an amazing banquet this past year. You had where the we put in the 12 original first Iron Man guys. Yeah. yeah. That was and awesome. fantastic evening. Uh, a lot of energy. A lot of great stories. After the event, I got to spend a little time with uh, Ian. Uh, with Archie Hapai, yeah. uh, talked to them, wonderful people. And, and uh, Ian's son um, reached out to me because he was doing a documentary film about the original 12. Yes. And he said, uh, gosh, can I possibly get into the banquet there and film it and maybe it'll be the capstone chapter. Yep. I said, absolutely. So I helped uh, put him in touch with the right people. I, I had him reach out to you so he could 
so it could close the loop with Iron Man to make sure that they were okay with what he was doing. And I'm really looking forward to seeing that movie when it comes out. It's going to be great. Yeah. Steve, thanks for what you do for the sport, man. Really appreciate it because, it, you know, like you said, it's behind the scenes. People don't see it. Yeah. But it, it, the sport doesn't thrive without it. Thanks, Bob. Great Steve seeing Sutherland you again. has been our guest. Poncho Man, take us out. Thank you, Poncho Man. Thank you.